Blessings and welcome everyone. It's time for something a little bit different. My name is Nico. Some of you may know me as Son of Selene, formerly known as Scarlet Moon on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Over the course of this last month or so, I have been tossing ideas around with a good friend of mine named Rob. He is my co-host. We have decided to create the Integrative Mysticism podcast, a place where we can actually talk about things from that deeper, fantastical, multidimensional perspective, really allowing ourselves permission to get out there with our own journey, with our own exploration of all things magical, mystical, and extra normal without having to necessarily contemporize it, without having to filter it through the context of our immediate reality experience. This in and of itself, you know, as far as I'm concerned, is all part of a bigger mission statement that I've been trying to live, which is make it real for people, help people understand that this isn't a metaphor. This is not one big lifestyle metaphor. And to also give that permission, that affirmation, that empowerment to those who already are living a multidimensional, magical, fully connected life. This is something that may feel very activating at times. And at other times, could be very world opening. Instead of trying to look at what's out there from the context of what's in here, we're going to talk about what's out there from the context of what's out there. Because a lot of us have been living it our whole lives. I can tell you something about myself and Rob. Rob and I are part of that generation. For you astrologers out there, it's that Uranus in Sagittarius generation, 1980 to 19. 88, where there was this huge influx of souls that were already on, you know, born with one eye open. See a lot of people kind of doing their thing, a lot of intergenerational debate over this shift, this conscious evolution process. Let's talk about things as they are a true, multidimensional, magical perspective. I want to throw it to you. You know, how, how, how has your journey been? What, what is your every day? And how did you know that you were already more on that multidimensional frequency? How did you come to understand your place in all of it? But Rob, you know, uh, how long have you been at work? How long have you been, you know, in this as well? Well, in contrast to your experience, Nico, mine has been one that's uh, been a private endeavor overall, uh, even covert in, in some ways. And so I would say as far as actively consciously working with the mystical arts for a variety of purposes, it's been about it's been about 15 years. And there's been moments of hiatus and, and seemingly disconnect from uh, from the, the metaphysical, but the metaphysical never went anywhere and, and neither did I because everything that I was willingly creating was manifesting at the time, regardless of how active or inactive I was in my spiritual practice. And, and it, it's a work in progress still because I understand that despite my ingrained, intimate, primal, fundamental relationship to the divine and everything, uh, I have plenty of room for my own spiritual growth. So uh, my spiritual practice, to be honest with you, has not always been uh, towards the promotion of my own individual or collective spiritual growth. Sure. Uh, I've used it for uh, destructive purposes, for chaotic purposes, for selfish reasons, ambitious reasons, you name it. But I find that those experiences, despite the consequences bore upon me through them, taught me much. And that's how I genuinely perceive my experience in general, as one of learning. Well, and, I, sorry, go ahead. Well, no, but I, I, I do want to kind of, if it's all right, interject. I think that, you know, we are living in a time where the idea of the maturation of our metaphysical skills, 
the application of our metaphysical skills, magic and conscious evolution has a very interesting spin on it, you know, and I, I when you talk about things like, OK, I may have done something that would be considered dark or I may have done some things that would be considered chaotic or self-interested, you know, it's important to understand that, you know, I, th I think that we've all been there. You know, people don't know 2007 Nico. <laughs> so it's it's I, I just want to, you know, kind of be there with you just in case it's like like that's that's not a humbling thing. I think that that's that's just that's a part of it. For those who have already embarked and who, who have a deep, uh, deep relationship with the divine, because that's what it fundamentally is. It's just your working relationship with divinity. We we understand that okay, we broken a few, we broken a few eggs, we smashed a few there here or there, but now we understand how we can work with it in a way to support ourselves and others, and it's not that difficult either. Well, no, it's 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 really not, and I think that it's important, you know, to acknowledge the fact that like I mean I think we're always going to be, you know, the the point is to evolve, and I think that there is a damaging or limiting element of the human condition that I think a lot of, you know, what we see in the contemporary new age and spiritual world where it's it's really more, uh, you know, you seek to attain a certain level and then just sort of plateau there. I think that's a lot of that's left over from, you know, a lot of societal programming that we get from our collegiate system and organized religion and everything that people kind of like, well, I'm looking for the state where I'm perfect and I don't have to learn anymore. I don't have to grow anymore. Or I, I'm really only doing this because I want to get rich or find a lover or heal or like there, there seems to be some kind of prize. I think that I, I think that you can kind of measure, OK, where a person is in their spiritual maturity based on the fact that they will acknowledge that they are growing and that it's not a means to a material end or a status or station oriented end, whatever that station or status is. Well, I, I the question that just is clawing at me at the moment for you, Nico, is what is it in your experience, what is it you see or perceive is the is the greatest impediment that people are facing in expression and in, in expressing their divinity and expressing their godhood and their, uh, dare I say, near infinite uh, creative capacity? What What's the what's the biggest hiccup for for people at large that you see? If I had to boil it down to one statement, I would say it's a lack of imagination, a lack of wonder. There is a maybe a priority to have the full expression and full breadth of one's creative, magical, multidimensional, infinite self be bent to serve the experience, and the limitations of the human experience, if that makes sense. It's it's sort of this this drive you know to actually go against that old saying be in the world and not of it the drive to be of the world and that i feel can come from a lot of different spaces you know whether it's the drive to be of the world in the interest of mastering it the drive to be of the world in the interest of feeling belong feeling a sense of belonging or being belongs the drive to be of the world because you don't want to be yourself and you want to find something else to be that's of the world. And when we capitulate to the pressure to be of the world in that way, whether it's externally imposed or self-imposed, we stunt our growth. We freeze. We do not unlock our true potential. We don't have the creative or imaginative or the capacity to wonder that allows us to keep growing and allows us to experience the full breadth of not only what all of this is truly made of and where it came from, but what else we could be, what else we can do, and just how powerful we truly are. Does that make sense? So if, if I understand you correctly, Nico, uh, we're, we're looking at the never ending story, got it right. Ab-so-freaking-lutely. So much of that media was basically teaching people the, the kindergarten steps of interacting with the universe, you know, never ending story and labyrinth. Um, awesome. Absolutely. But yes, they definitely got it right. They definitely got it right. And yes, the biggest detriment now is uh, the fact that people 
don't really know how to cultivate their own dreams. And so, yeah, we're dealing with the nothing. We have, there, there's a need to get over the misperception <clears throat> that the imagination is something is not primary. Uh, it, it is indeed primary and fundamental to everything. Literally, yeah. the, the, w- there is no creation without the imagination. You hear that the question comes out, you hear it all the time. Well, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know who, what I am or who I am and what do, how do I how do I make it and how do I create it? How do I do it? I don't know. You know, all this unknown. Yeah. And that lack of knowing is primarily fueled by the lack of imagination. Because frankly, if one is connected to their imagination, there's nothing you you can't work through because everything is available. If you don't recognize that everything is available, then what is available? I don't know. You, you It's up to you to discern. I think that people, uh, how would I, how would I start this? I think the idea of imagination and wonder is something that has been, you know, systemically crippled. The deference that we give to the baser fears and compulsions, drives and hungers that really has been exploited, yes, by the media, yes, by the economy, yes, by religion. I think a lot of people struggle to cultivate their imagination because they've been trained to copy, right? One of the biggest weaknesses that humans have that is cleverly disguised as a strength is the tendency to over systematize everything. When you over systematize everything and everything's running on a pattern, a routine, a script, a precedent, a tradition, there is no room for imagination. There is no room for growth. There is no opportunity to even imagine, there's that word, how to even come into your own. You know, that's the thing that we have to understand. A lot of the things that we are trying to do or we have been taught to aspire to are not entirely personal. The desire for them, you know, or the interest or the compulsion towards them is taught. This is important because I was shown it was important through emotional demonstration, market research, and crowd control or crowd pleasing reward systems. And so do we know what we really want? How do you know that you are living what you really want to do and contribute to the world or the relationship you saw on TV or the relationship you saw your grandparents have? And is that entirely personal to who you truly are without imagination, without wonder, without that examination and exploration? A lot of people just don't know. But then you're all it's also coupled with disinclination towards self-discovery or discovery in general. Yeah, you know, forget forget the imagination the world imagination, just you know, plain in your face, day-to-day experience, there's this this disinclination towards self-discovery, self-understanding, et cetera, and so forth. But the thing is, obviously, it, it just shows you what is the consequences for this failure and inhibition to allow the full expression of the individual and collective imagination because that that's where the nothing is truly at its most cr- cruel because mm-hmm. it denies it denies the expression of potential and basically steals our birthright it demands us to find a way to overcome these impediments and these I- implanted structures in, in a way that either we can make them serve us through our creative process or they dissipate and, and no longer find it's themselves involved. They, they just come to this space where they still try to systematize. They still, they're still trying to perfect the system that actually broke their imagination in the first place. And that, or maybe stunted their imagination, blocked their imagination. You know, I think that being, being somebody who can have a fantasy, somebody who gives themselves permission to interact with the realm of spirit because the imagination is the bridge if you spend your whole life only thinking of spirituality as a means of optimizing your experience here or as just a metaphor 
for self-help, for coping here, you're missing out on 98% of yeah, what you You're engaged do. in a shallow relationship. A very, very shallow relationship. We've funneled a lot as as a society. A, a lot of people have taken their ideas for, you know, creativity and, and imagination. And they've kind of, they, they don't allow themselves to, to create their own, uh, their own approach. You know, why do I prize informality? It's not because I'm this just chaotic person who is triggered every time somebody imposes a, a suggestion. God, no. It's because I treat my practice more like a martial art, like a mixed martial art than I do any kind of religion. And, and the key word I hear there is art. Oh, yeah. You know, it's there are things that you can do. You know, whether you're we're, whether we're talking about spiritual practice in terms of just meditation and self-discovery or we're talking about the application of metaphysical arts through energy work, ceremony, crystals, workings, the limits of your language are the limits of the of your universe. The best a lot of people allow themselves to have, because it is self-imposed at the end of the day, is merely a suspension of disbelief. And a suspension of disbelief is not the same thing as having an imagination. That's a very important distinction. And it, it's often conflated, and again, it's a problem. It goes, it goes in the same line. It, it goes right along with uh, the misconception of the imagination not being primary. Right. A and again, if you take if you take those positions, you're going to have a corrupted creation. Yes. Whether it's a, a you know a, a a spiritual working, or it's a podcast, or it's a house, or raising a child or a marriage, they are all one and the same. And I think that that might be something that you understand, you know, in that way that a lot of people would do well to understand where, I mean, because uh, I see you as somebody who does not differentiate. When I go to the waterfalls, I'm objectively present with waterfalls and I also created them. Yeah. that That's what we're talking about. What about you? All my physical experience I have is a creation of my own. That's just the that's just the outward objective expression of it. Every single one of us is fully capable, and not only capable is ha is able and is engaged in right now the same level of total creation. The whole experience is created. Uh, knock on the wood in your house. It, it's all it's all a matter of creation. Everything you're going through, everything you've experienced, all of it. Creation. What about you? What do you think is not to throw your question back at you, I guess. Um what 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 do you what do you it's feel? Okay, Nico. Is... I did I did ask, I did put you right on the spot with the uh, what's the greatest impediment to the uh to the spiritual evolution, so it's okay. You feel no, free was... to put me on the spot as well. I was just I was just baiting you into phrasing the question again. What about you now? <laughs> I was like, how did he phrase it? Did he say impediment? Did he say block or, you know, synonyms? So. Obstruct. Well, I'm hoping this show, this this episode and, and any subsequent episodes serve to you know, not obstruct the flow, the creative flow. That's the thing. Everything we're presenting right now is is is, again, through our own subjective creative processes. You can have whatever it is you want. It's the pro the, you you because you are the progenitor of the process itself. Okay. For example, uh, creating a portal. Portals is a topic Nico and I have engaged in from time to time. I like to actually use three D ambient environment, environmental objects to create portals. Sure. To interact with portals. Okay. Look at these two elder twin trees standing next to each other. That looks like a perfect spot. And then, it became, so it is. You charge the energy, you charge the space. You can even do an EMF reading by these portals if you if you really want to you know, detect an actual physical change, because that's what happens near these portals. The EMF readings go haywire, and, and that's how I work. Other people, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a leap of assumption here, Nico. You can channel. I'm assuming moonlight, sunlight, various forms of light, where you could literally manifest a portal on the spot. Yeah, um, essentially, yes. The I do use physical objects, and in particular, I, I like minerals, um, crystals, and things like that uh, for at least anchoring it. Otherwise, I have to, you know, exert my own 
consciousness to hold it open. But yes, I, I do. I have been working extensively more and more with the moon. I mean, uh, being attuned with the moon, that makes the most sense. I do work with the sun. Um, I do work with the stars. I work with the, the soul of the planet herself. It's light seems to be my thing. It, it again, so even we even have some overlap in, in our practice using the physical objects. Oh, it, sure. it just highlights that, it, again, it, it, it's highlighting the, the unified and individuated uh, relationships that we all have with the divine. This is how Nico's relating. This is how I'm relating. You relate however you relate because whatever you can imagine exists. Anything, literally, if you imagine something, it exists because the imagination itself exists. Where do you think all the tropes, all the ideas, all the notions, what is it you want to create? What can you imagine? That's the answer. Do you think that maybe the, uh, that the impediment then comes in where people are only allowing themselves to work with examples that have already been brought to before them? Is it and, really imagination? And you're bringing back the conditioning and the programming being express, expressed yeah. when it's when it's basically uh, impose and, and regurgitate data. Well, we're looking to be imposed by data so we can regurgitate it. Right. And, and that's what's occurring. And, and yeah, we're we're def you you bring it up. Frankly, you drive the point home a lot. Nico is we're deferring our creative divine birthright. For what? what? What is that serving? The game running inside the real world. Does that make sense? Are you, are you suggesting it's the simulation within the simulation? I think simulation is too of the world. I don't like the term simulation uh, for that reason. I think that that's, that's one of those terms that we use with not having the vernacular to articulate the totality of, of, of what we're talking about. Um, not saying that as, a, as an insult to anyone who uses that phrasing. By the no, way. it sounds like, it, to me, that's it. I look at the mainline religions as an infantile uh, representation of the divine. Sounds mm -hmm. like you see simulation as an infantile representation of the divine. And a, I see it as a creation, no different than the Elder Scrolls or World of Warcraft or... You know, I mean, and do you think uh, it is, do you consider Elder Scrolls a simulation? Do you think of World of Warcraft as a simulation? You could argue it is to a degree, but it's it's a creation with its own set of rules and guidelines and bylaws and physics. It's a contained reality experience. It can't be a simulation of the totality of all that is by nature of the fact that it is limited. Okay, so you, you kind of see those simulation analogies, they, they, they kind of fall short, and they, they, may be, they may be diminish the message we that we're trying to get across. In my experience, it still encourages the anthropomorphizing of greater cosmic phenomena. The, yeah, that's there. Th that's the point I, I stand with you, especially. On the point, that's that that that's definitely a major word of caution, uh, because that again, that's that's basically limiting your imaginative power. If you're if you're only consigned to the anthropomorphic, right? Well, that look, people, that it's one species. Just look around you. So there may be more going on in that perspective. Yeah, if you're, I mean, because at that point, it, it, to me, I look at it and it kind of feels. It's anthropomorphic to the side, to, to the to the to the level of like, OK, now we're going to start asking, you know, now we're going to be projecting the systems, the guidelines and the physics of this world onto our own higher aspects, our own multidimensional selves, our higher selves, the Godhead, angels, starseeds, Elohim, you know, and it can get a little ridiculous, right? They'd be like saying, well, all right. The angels must use money. <laughs> you know, it gets a little out. It gets a Department little. Department of State to passport incarnation approval process. Yeah. Right. You know, it, it gets a little. It, it kind of gets but a little again, off track. If, 
you could imagine the the absurd degree of machinations that construct and maintain and produce and uh, further the universe. Well, yeah, it's all there. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think it. I don't think it's contained anymore. I really don't. I think that that's what this whole conscious evolution process is all about. I don't think anyone is contained in this way. I think that people who feel the most contained are the people that have. Now, now, would you then? Would you then uh, say that uh, uh, claiming our bodies are our containers is is not appropriate either? It, I guess it all depends on context, and I guess it depends on connotation. Yeah, how? how yeah, exactly. The context and how is the containment serving? You know, what's I, the containment serving here? I see my my. I is see it my adding body. to the already established limitations because? That's one of the, the creative hiccups I see is that people are creating more in limitations upon themselves I through their my, belief structures and their imagination. I, I look at the body as a conduit, not so much a container. I, I, I no totally on board with with that. And it's, I mean, you could you conduit for your consciousness to interact with third dimensional reality. Yeah, you know, this is just the the biological satellite dish radio dish whatever you want to look at it you know that my higher self is utilizing to experience influence and participate in the physical experience i think being a conduit versus a container yeah that's that's kind of how i look at it and, and if you also consider a limitless being cannot be limitless if if limitation does not exist so uh, to to uh, allow and provide for a soul to go through a limited experience serves to give a greater experience to the limitless experience. But a, a major problem I see is the is the creative constructs of of detrimental limitation and frankly, uh, through a malignant form of self doubt uh, yes. being the pathway. Uh, that's but that's what through my lens I've observed. Doubt in and of itself is one of those things that we can often um, mischaracterize as safe. We can mischaracterize it as practical, you know, something that we should not necessarily question. And doubt in and of itself, um, I feel, is the reason a lot of people struggle to let go of the attachment to what they have been presented with when it comes to the limited options for living in a human experience. You know, you want me to go and connect to my higher levels. You want me to suddenly understand or explore things that I have not even let myself believe could be true since I was five. I'm going to scroll through the vitriol on, on my social media. I'm going to go look at my fear porn. I'm going to go look at the stock market. I'm going to go be responsible with my doubt. When all you're doing is diverting your creative processes into creations that may or may not serve you. Well, and, and, think, and when you follow the assigned prescriptions, they tend to not serve you. I had a uh, an interesting conversation with a friend. See, he, he, he was talking about this very thing where like, look, okay, fine, you're, you practice magic, you're spiritual, you believe in manifestation, you do all of these things. He's like, you're not an island. When a hurricane hits, you know, that's part of the collective experience. And the, the hurricane is there, your magic, you know, whatever, your spiritual practice, you know, you're still going to experience the hurricane. And then I kind of threw back and I said, all right, so say there was nothing in, 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 in that experience. Maybe there was a higher purpose for that hurricane. So there, there's nothing I can do to avert it. How that experience is experienced, not only you my imagination. You have a say. You have, I a, have say. a say. We all have a say in creating reality. Yes could mean the difference between my house being the only one left standing in the neighborhood. You created a construct that was going to prevent that event from hurting your property. You did it. You made it. It worked. One of the blessings and curses of living with OCD is that you learn 
that all stimuli is merely a suggestion. For those that, you know, understand OCD, oh, maybe, well, let me back that up. But if you don't have OCD, okay, OCD is a, a very challenging uh, mental condition. It's, you have synapses and neuropathways that are so hardened from a young age to fire uh, what are commonly referred to as intrusive thoughts that happen so intensely that your sympathetic nervous system actually reacts to them as though they are really happening. It's not the same as a post-traumatic stress trigger. And you have insight. It's not like you're hearing voices in your head. It's The insight is you know your brain is firing almost like a faulty alarm system. And so that's where a lot of the OCD, the compulsions and the rituals kind of come from, whether it's the hand washing, the checking, the counting, the lights, whatever. It's trying to control those thoughts, trying to get the sympathetic nervous system to calm the hell down. You don't really believe it, right? You have what's called insight. You are aware that this is wrong, but your body and your brain on the physical level are firing this faulty alarm system. It's just it's just electronic. Uh, it's it's electronic condition. You can look at it that way. You're for you're essentially forced to manually override your regulatory process for stimuli. Yes. And have fun with that, folks. <laughs> you have to train yourself to identify this is just a suggestion. This is just a prompt to what but, but, but look at what you so eloquently are describing is how you were able to how you're able to utilize your perceived weakness into strength into something functional and useful to serve you. You, know, you recognize suggestion, suggestion. It allowed you to learn how the universe communicates with us. Mm -hmm. In probably a more adaptive manner. Well, the, a lot of the, the stimuli that we get from the world is just a suggestion. Maybe it's a, a control effort, right? Let's try and get people to manifest something awful. You know, I bet there are a lot of people that don't think about this or aren't in control of this. So they're just going to dump a bunch of emotional trauma energy into it right away. You know, there, you, you have this suggestion. You want to freak out about this? You want to create a self-fulfilling prophecy about this? It, you know, having OCD... And beating OCD, for me, is about remembering that I have a choice. You know, I have a very Sartrean existentialist philosophy about it. You know, I to me, it got to the point where it's like, look, if you start doing things because you say you have no choice, then you're acting in bad faith. If you believe that, that you can't even stop to choose, you have given up your meaning in the universe because you've become an object at the mercy of its circumstances. And with that and the will to identify a suggestion and choose, it's been a lot easier. I, I feel having an expanded imagination and the permission to, you know, it, to have your imagination be your guide, to let it fuel your creativity, to fuel your magic, to fuel your spiritual path, to fuel everything that you do, without having it be limited by the parameters of the suggestions you've received, is the way to perfect your process here on Earth. OCD is kind of interesting. I'm going to bring it back to OCD for a second, because a lot of people, when it comes to OCD, it's one of those anxiety disorders that the, the origin story of it isn't really necessarily understood. Is it nature? Is it nurture? It's essentially nature. Right. You're born with it. You're born with a proclivity to it. It may or may not switch on. Typically, people who develop OCD, uh, it happens young. It happens to boys much younger than girls. Being in a space where you are constantly prompted to be vigilant, you know, whether it's because, you know, that you're growing up in a very hostile environment, um, there is no sense of security, it's excessively bombarded with instability and chaos and emotional dysregulation from the outside world, you're witnessing it. A part of your brain, you have to unmake that programming within yourself, right? You are literally teaching yourself a new way to look at the world because your brain has adapted to a world that bombarded you with a lot of limiting suggestions. On you were, you were, for, you were forced from the get-go to create and unmake the world on a constant basis. Power leveling. 
clearly. <laughs> you know, all of our journeys are different. Going back to the problem with systematizing everything, God, one of the things I hate the most about this contemporary spiritual movement is like all of a sudden it's turned into this. It's a glossary. It's like a giant glossary. Oh, God. <laughs> it is. It's, it's, it's. All which, I, which I will, uh, to be honest, I will consult, frankly, because that's part of my creative process. You know, I, I basically made arrangements with the universe where I live in the wilderness. So, OK, send me, you know, a creature, uh, you know, creatures, familiars to to pass on whatever I need to know. And I'll correlate it to the glossary on the Internet. And that's literally how I will get the message. OK, the Blue Jays, a dozen of them are swirling in circles for seemingly an hour now okay let's the, what's the meaning of blue jays oh that's the, the i consult the glossary too but uh it, it, again that can serve to constrict the creative process if it's used yeah. excess i think that well i think that the, the the glossary can help but I, again it's it's a suggestion what you do with the suggestion is what matters it's when we turn it into a dogma a sacred dogma you know whether it's uh, a religion or it is a language barrier or a politicized 12-step program. That's where you're that's where it's the cathedral of the damned. And I think that I mean, it's not like I haven't taken suggestions before. It's not like there aren't systems that have been put in place for paganism or hermetic science or martial arts. There are yeah, we've, systems. We, we've all consulted other you know, sources yeah. for pretty much everything. Yeah. You know, the but universe it's... speaks to us, too. It's just a matter, what I'm getting out of you is we we really need to find a, a better way to filter out you know, the suggestions that don't serve us. Because mm -hmm. it's not only a suggestion, it's also a form of input. Yes. And you I know how that. I talk about inputs. <laughs> yeah. That's why you and I get along so well. It's because it's, you know, the, the, the influence idea. You know, I, I, I personally think that you don't need an influence. The connections that I build with people, you know, we have an influence on each other. It's because we're stimulating things that are already there. We're, we're empowering each other, but it's not an over-the-counter empowerment. It's a resonance. It's an activation. And yes, yes. I it's, mean, we're, at this moment, we're undergoing an activation, and any listener is partaking as well. I, I'm just getting this sense of we're really to clear the, the to clear the obstruction to the authentic creative process. Yeah. It really involves a dissolution of maladaptive boundaries. To to be frank, I, I'm not fully conscious of some of these boundaries uh, and, and how they're how and they're in the and how they're functioning and how they're not serving us, frankly. Well, we're not. We we it's it's you have to again. It's a it's a moment to moment thing. I think. You know, there's some moments where my OCD will catch me every once in a while, you know, where I'll sit in the car and I'll be like, no, I am. I know I locked the door. I am not going to go back and check the door. And I just go, you know, and once I get beyond the point of no return, I'm good. We have to train ourselves. I don't think it's about being an expert in everything, because I mean, we've we've seen clearly the the struggles that can happen when, when you talk about maladaptive, uh, you know, behavioral programming. Going in the direction of just aggressive, malignant suspicion and paranoia and reactivity because you don't want a suggestion or you suspect an agenda or you suspect something, you're still crippled. Yeah, because regardless of whatever negative or positive the suggestion may be, you are self-imposing basically a negative suggestion on yourself. I mean, ultimately, it's your willful choice however you interpret or whatever you do with any suggestion. Again, you are the owner of all this. You are the creator and progenitor of everything, okay? So when a suggestion comes to you, this is this is the input that you have created. On some level, on some wavelength, it was a creation. It was a quantum creation, and now you are interfacing with it in your direct experience, in your conscious awareness. So going through it from a, taking it through, through the learning perspective lens, you might be able to help you identify where you could be, where those blocks are, where what's holding you back from your full authentic uh, creative process. Because that's really what we're talking about. We're talking a lot of, there's a lot of awakened people, but there's a lot of people who frankly are not 
their creative processes is 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 blunted. It's stagnant. It's definitely not an optimal place, and that's reflective in the world we experienced. Every problem on the face of the planet is a mirror of the destructive creative process. I like how you put that. It's it's like you have a lot of people who are awake to what the problems are and yet asleep to the fact that they're creating and recreating over and over and over again the dysfunctional suggestions and examples that they inter- that they internalized. It's kind of like repeating the choices your parents made with you now that you're a parent. And you might not know that. You might not know that. You might be totally awake. You might be reading all the baby books. Or you are repeating the same relationship over and over and over again. Or in, in the case for a lot of the, the, again, the more recently awakened folks, um, still trying to play organized religion. Still want to do it. You still want to do it. I, that's, it's fascinating to me. That, that to me is fascinating. Where it's I like mean, want- is, is that the proverbial stake in the Matrix? I know it's not real. But you know what? Tastes good. Is that is that what you're getting at with that point? No, what I'm actually getting at is I know it's not real. So I want to win the Matrix. I don't want to leave. Which I guess is kind of the same thing as what you said, actually, now that I say it out loud. So, yeah, <laughs> it's exactly the same damn thing. We're, 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 heading, the, we're heading in the same general direction. Uh, the, there is a there is a cognitive trap for spiritually inclined people who have awakened to kind of conclude i'm awakened all right that's it game game set match uh, i'm connected with my higher self i mean the, the awakening is just in terms of your life experience as a human on this incar in this arc incarnation the awakening is 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 the, is the beginning ages oh yeah you got to set up your primary stats the awakening is literally trees. look at your <laughs> look at your actual physical sleep you when uh, when you awaken that's the first thing you basically do yeah <laughs> the problem is if you put too much emphasis on the awakening i've observed you start to absolve yourself of responsibility uh, to the creative process which is more incumbent upon you because you're awakened okay awakening is more responsibility for instance, myself, I I re, I strongly contributed to a false paradise, and Nico will mention the false paradise year of 2015. Uh, b- believe me, my creative process was very deconstructive in a lot of ways, and, and, and I mean, technically, it didn't have to happen. It was supposed to happen, clearly. Otherwise, it would have happened. Well, uh, you get me started on 2014, 2015. We're going to be here another two hours. Um, well, I think that's I think that's a good segue. We can. Uh, it's Back to the Future was took place in 2015. That's probably a good segue to close the, the opening show here. Yeah, we don't want to we don't go too far on that one. Well, I do, but you know we have to save some for later. And uh, no, this is this has been good. This has been really really good. It's a collaborative creative process with. A, a very harmonious resonance. I mean, is it possible this could be a walk in the park, Nico? Yes. Is yeah, it possible like that. that I'm thinking where the hell <laughs> of are you? Of course it's possible. We just talked about the limitless imagination. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely it's possible. Well, guys, I think we're going to wrap it up for now. I hope you enjoyed this very, very much. Don't forget to leave a rating. Subscribe, because this is the season of magic. We have transitioned an era. We can be magical boys, magical girls, magical beings. Be the god you are. Stay peaceful, everybody. Take care.